Welcome to part B of applications of zinc finger uh, nucleases. Uh, here we will be discussing about the application of zinc finger nucleases uh, as therapeutic approaches for curing uh, human diseases. Uh, first let us take up the case of application in uh, HIV uh, treatment. So, before uh, going to the exact applications, let us try to understand uh, some of the basic concepts uh, related to the uh, pathology of HIV. So, uh, here certain uh, molecular players are involved uh, in this particular uh, disease. Uh, for example, the uh, chemokin receptors play an important role and these are uh, having around 7 transmembrane domains and uh, amino and uh, carboxyl uh, termini. Uh, the chemokin receptor CCR5 has uh, many natural uh, ligands and is expressed in various cells like uh, macrophages, dendritic cells and memory T cells in the immune system, uh, endothelium, epithelium, vascular smooth muscle and fibroblast, uh, microglia, neurons, astrocytes uh, in the central nervous uh, system. This particular uh, receptor CCR5 also functions as a co-receptor for human immunodeficiency virus to enter into uh, CD4 uh, lymphocytes. So, homozygosity of uh, uh, del 32 which is a deletion mutant uh, which is and a natural uh, 32 base pair deletion of this particular gene uh, CCR5 uh, confers strong resistance to HIV infection while heterozygosity of this deletion results in slower rate of HIV uh, progression. So, a person having a uh, homozygous uh, phenotype of this uh, del 32 mutant of CCR5 uh, will be naturally resistant to HIV and it is reported that about 1% uh, of the Scandinavian population carries this uh, mutation and they are naturally uh, immune to uh, HIV. And this is the simple structure of the HIV virus uh, which is required to understand how it enters the uh, human cells. So, you have uh, a lipid layer uh, and it contains two uh, glycoprotein receptors uh, GP120 and uh, GP41 uh, uh, and these are used to gain entry into the uh, host uh, cells. So, this is the structure of a mature HIV variant and structure of this uh, HIV uh, genome which produces the various components of this uh, particular virus. So, uh, these uh, glycoprotein receptors are important for the virus to gain entry into the host cells. So, this is a simplified diagram of this uh, HIV virus showing the GP120 and GP uh, 41 and uh, this is a uh, human cell okay? and this human cell has CD4 uh, uh, recept uh, receptor and uh, CCR5 uh, receptors. So, here uh, this virus glycoprotein uh, will bind to the host cell uh, CD4 here and you can see this matching uh, and these uh, peg like matching here and uh, a co-receptor CCR5. So, these two are important uh, to which the virus glycoprotein receptors will bind. The fusion of the virus with the host cell uh, membrane results in viral uncoating and the release of the viral nucleo nucleocapsid into the cytoplasm. So, here first it will bind and then this is uh, internalized uh, as you can see here the B. So, in the next step uh, this is uh, releasing its uh, nucleic acids. The enzyme uh, reverse transcriptase converts the single stranded RNA into double stranded uh, DNA. Okay? You can see here. And this viral DNA is uh, transported to the host uh, nucleus where it is integrated into the host uh, DNA uh, through the integrase. And you know about this 
integration uh, mechanism which we have discussed in the preliminary lectures. Finally, uh, the viral DNA is transcribed and translated using host cell machinery and then cleaved by viral protease into functional uh, viral proteins and then some of them are uh, released which go and bind uh, to other uh, nearby cells through the CD4 and CCR5 uh, receptors. And uh, so, the proliferation uh, happens uh, by this way. This viral RNA and proteins will assemble at the cell surface and bud off the cellular membrane. Now, let us discuss a little bit about the structure of these uh, CCR5 uh, uh, protein and the gene as we have discussed already that this is a uh, transmembrane protein having uh, uh, certain domains okay. and this is the uh, gene structure uh, you can uh, see over here. So, the protein structure of these CCR5 uh, indicates regions of importance uh, with the uh, dotted line showing uh, disulfide uh, linkages here ok. Uh, the boxed uh, S and P uh, this is the S and uh, the P here you can see uh, indicating sulphate and phosphate uh, moieties and the three zigzag lines uh, showing uh, permutation of the C uh, moieties. The D, R, Y, L, A, V, V, H sequences uh, highlighted uh, in uh, blue here. Okay. So, these are uh, the gene structure and the uh, protein structure of a CCR5 gene. Now, this uh, particular gene undergoes a mutation which is known as the CCR5 uh, delta 32 mutation. And this was initially discovered in 1996 as a genetic mutation that confers protection to cells from infection by HIV uh, and, and we have already discussed about uh, the immunity to HIV if it is uh, homozygous and uh, if uh, it is heterozygous it delays the infection of uh, HIV. And a genetic analysis of the ORF of this gene revealed a deletion of, deletion of around 32 base pairs uh, uh, from 794 to around uh, 8, uh, 30, uh, 25. That is why this is known as uh, del 32. And this deletion involves a frame shift, shift mutation with the inclusion of 7 novel amino acids uh, following amino acid 174 and a stop codon at amino acid uh, 182. The mutant allele uh, contains uh, 215 amino acids in comparison to the full length 352 amino acid uh, wild type CCR5. It was soon found out uh, that the region affected was the second extracellular loop. The subsequent protein lacked the last three transmembrane domains as well as regions important in G protein interaction and signal transduction. Uh, broad groups discovered that CD4 uh, plus cells with the mutated CCR5 prevented HIV uh, envelope uh, fusion. So, this is uh, the CCR5 wild type and this is the CCR5 uh, delta 32. So, what are the difference between this wild type and the uh, uh, deletion uh, mutants? The reason involving the uh, deletion uh, 32 mutation with the upper section showing the translation of the wild type CCR5 protein while the lower section demonstrates the translation of the uh, mutant proteins. The red highlighted regions in the wild type sequence refers to the regions uh, deleted in uh, delta uh, 32. The red highlighted regions in the mutant protein sequence refers to the novel amino acids inserted uh, followed by the uh, stop codon. Uh, the CCR5 uh, mutation results in a uh, defective phenotype of this receptor uh, which is truncated making it shorter and unable to be exposed to the cell surface as a receptor. Uh, it becomes a half receptor, uh, a part of it will remain inside the uh, uh, cell uh, attached uh, to and near the uh, cell membrane. Uh, in the absence of the CCR5 receptor on the cell surface due to this mutation, 
the HIV cannot bind to T cells and macrophages and thus cannot enter the cells. Individuals homozygous for this mutation will thus not have the CCF5 receptor on the cell membrane of the T cells uh, due to this uh, shortened peptide. So, around uh, two in 2009, uh, uh, Hutter and colleagues reported about the effectiveness of uh, bone marrow transplantation from a uh, uh, homozygous 32 uh, del 32 uh, donor uh, in curing an HIV infected um, patient. And, and this becomes a kind of a, a breakthrough and then uh, people are now trying to create this kind of uh, deletions by uh, genome editing. In this particular case, the patient's CD4 lymphocytes uh, increase to normal levels without any uh, antiretroviral drugs and the virus remain undetected for at least 5 years uh, of follow up. However, the rarity of this mutation at the, and the safety risk associated with current uh, bone marrow transplantation protocols are the major obstacles uh, to this treatment. And in this context, genome uh, editing techniques like gene finger nucleases uh, are, are promising uh, alternatives uh, for genomic disruptions at specific DNA sites of interest and in this particular case, the CCR5 uh, uh, delta 32 sequence. So, here you can see that uh, uh, you have the full receptor uh, where you have the external uh, domain as well expressed and uh, which is exposed outside the cell. So, HIV uh, binds not only to uh, CD4, uh, it also binds to the CCR5 because uh, it is its domains are available for binding and this helps in the uh, entry and finally, uh, infection and uh, proliferation. But in the case of the uh, CCR5 uh, delta 32 mutation, uh, now this is a half receptor and its uh, transmembrane domains uh, are not exposed to the outside of the wall. So, HIV can bind to uh, CD4, uh, but uh, it will not be able to enter and uh, infect uh, the cells. So, therefore, this kind of uh, cells or individuals uh, will be resistant uh, to uh, HIV. So, time and again we have emphasized that uh, in, in case of homozygous uh, individuals, uh, we will have full uh, resistance, but in the case of heterozygous individuals, the resistance will not be full, but the rate of progression of HIV uh, will be uh, delayed. So, this has become an important uh, application area of uh, JLFN uh, uh, technology. So, for doing these, uh, we need primers uh, and, and donor plasmid uh, generation and uh, you can see here in the upper panel uh, the JLFN targeted uh, DNA sequence uh, and, and the interspace. And then in the lower panel, uh, we can see DNA sequence of the uh, D plasmid around the JFN site and the insertion specific primer uh, IP. A silent uh, TA uh, mutation adjacent to the left uh, JFN target site uh, was intentionally selected for confirmation and marking of the vicinity of the integration between the JFN uh, binding sites. And uh, Monotham and colleagues exploited uh, the advantages offered by the uh, stem cells plasticity in uh, JLFN. They successfully generated isogenic uh, and cell clones of uh, bone marrow derived mesenchymal stem cells that carry the stop codon of the CCF5 gene by using a JLFN mediated homology directed repair technique. Uh, these cells were expandable for more than 5 uh, passages and thus showed potential to serve as an individual's uh, cell factory. And this uh, approach of generation of patients own uh, CD4 cells uh, from high fidelity ZFN mediated HDR MSC clones has potential uh, to be beneficial in future uh, HIV uh, treatment. Let us now uh, discuss about another application of uh, ZFN technology. Uh, uh, as in the case of HIV uh, therapy, uh, JDFN uh, technology has huge potential uh, for cancer therapy and uh, many workers have been uh, trying to use it in 
uh, diverse kinds of uh, cancers. In our lecture, we will be discussing about uh, one such cancer only due to uh, paucity of uh, time. Uh, the application here we discuss is the application of ZFN technologies in cervical cancer uh, as a uh, model uh, example. So, let us uh, try to learn about uh, a little bit about the cervical cancer, uh, its incidence rates. Uh, the globally, uh, this cancer is the fourth most uh, frequent cancer in women uh, with an estimated uh, 604,000 new cases uh, in, in uh, 2020. And there were uh, uh, 342,000 uh, uh, estimated deaths from cervical cancer uh, in uh, 2020 about 90 percent of which occurred in the low and middle income uh, countries. A large majority of uh, cervical cancers uh, more than 95 percent is due to the human uh, papilloma virus HPV and uh, particularly HPV type 16 and 18 are responsible for nearly 50 percent of high grade uh, cervical uh, precancers. Sankar and associates uh, used a six fingered uh, comprojector JFN pair to target the E6 gene of HPV uh, 16 uh, genome. So, this is the HPV 16 uh, genomic map. You can see here uh, various uh, genes. So, let us study them uh, one by one. Uh, the HPV genome contains approximately around 8 uh, open reading frames and uh, these are all transcribed from a single uh, stranded uh, DNA. These ORFs are divided into 3 functional parts, the early region uh, that encodes proteins E1 to uh, E7 okay? and this is necessary for viral replication. Then they are the late uh, region. Uh, that encodes the structural proteins uh, L1 to uh, L2 that are required for uh, virus assembly. And there is a largely non coding part that is referred to as the uh, long uh, control uh, region, uh, which contains cis elements uh, that are necessary for the replication and transcription of viral DNA. The viral E proteins are transcribed from early promoters whereas the L proteins are transcribed principally from the late promoters. And uh, this is the 7904 is the total number of base pairs which is the size of this uh, HPV uh, 16 uh, genome. The uh, HPV E6 and E7 oncogenes play a crucial role in the HPV induced carcinogenesis. So, if we uh, can manipulate these genes, can silence them uh, E6 and E7, uh, we can develop some kind of a uh, therapeutic strategy or uh, cancer, uh, cervical cancer uh, therapy. So, this is the SPV genome and uh, it produces E6 and E7 which are oncogenes and uh, which play crucial role uh, in the uh, development of this uh, disease. And uh, both these genes uh, products can drive a cell towards malignancy by contributing to the 6 major uh, hallmarks of cancer through several molecular uh, pathways. You can see over here so many different pathways, we will try to understand these pathways one by one. The E6 uh, mediated uh, P53 manipulation uh, and the E7 mediated inhibition of PRB protein uh, leading to sustained cell proliferation and resistance to uh, apoptotic uh, barriers. Both these E6 and E7 contribute to achieve uncontrolled uh, proliferation through deregulation of uh, growth suppressors. E6 targets an important growth suppressor P53 while PRB is one of the major targets of this uh, E7 uh, among 
others. So, here you can see this UB acquitination leads to the uh, PRB uh, degradation and here the ubiquitization of P53 will also lead to uh, the degradation of these uh, particular uh, proteins. Uh, these P53 is famously known as the guardian of the genome. Uh, this is a 53 kilodalton tumor suppressor protein which decides the fate of a cell during conditions of stress. This E50, E6 uh, mediates uh, the inhibition of uh, P50 directly or indirectly. Here you can see it is direct and here it is uh, indirect, uh, which allows several cellular changes to turn a cell uh, into an oncogenic state. When the cell experiences stress in the form of oxidative damage or other forms, uh, it activates a transcription factor to transcribe the genes needed for either cell cycle arrest or uh, apoptosis. On the other hand, uh, the murine uh, double minus 2 MDM2 here you can see uh, an E3 ubiquitin ligase helps to maintain it at the basal level in the healthy cell. Thus, P53 perturbation by E6 is significant to ensure continuous uh, cellular uh, proliferation. The E6 degrade uh, P53 through ubiquitination which I have already told to you uh, with the help of E6 uh, associated protein. Okay. So, here uh, you can see here uh, E6 uh, associated protein and it has uh, certain domains called the agile domain and the E6 uh, binding domain, then HECT uh, domain and uh, HERC2 uh, binding. So, uh, this is in brief the structure of or dom structural domains of a E6 uh, associated uh, protein and this is the E6 uh, which will bind and, and, and form a partnership with the E6 associated protein here okay. and soon these uh, two partners will uh, go and find out a P53 molecule and they will form a trimer over here. And since these are all three different uh, proteins, we call it as a heterotrimeric complex. And then as a result of these heterotrimeric complex formation, the P53 uh, will be uh, degraded and then this leads to the uncontrolled cell proliferation and resistance to uh, cell death. So, uh, in brief, HPV E6 bind to the Mm, LXX uh, double L consensus sequence in the conserved domain of uh, uh, E6 associated protein and forms a heterotrimeric complex of E6, uh, E6 AP and P53, which causes the degradation of uh, P53 and drives. Uh, the cells towards uncontrolled cellular division evading the uh, prevailing uh, checkpoints. So, uh, this is HPV and you have this E6 oncoprotein and the E7 uh, oncoprotein and there are various approaches uh, for uh, cervical cancer uh, therapy uh, like vaccines, uh, T cell therapy using natural compounds or uh, ribosome mediated antisense oligonucleotides RNA interference which comprises the nucleic acid based therapies. And now the uh, latest in these uh, uh, therapeutic uh, uh, arsenal are the uh, programmable uh, nucleases like uh, zinc finger talons and CRISPR. Uh, we will discuss about uh, the zinc finger uh, nucleases. So, uh, the E6 and E7s represent the most effective targets uh, for therapeutics uh, in cervical cancer as it can ensure the eradication of all such cancers, uh, cancer cells by bringing down any or all of the uh, cancer hallmarks. So, genome editing technologies to target uh, these oncogenes E6 and E7, the HPV E6, E7 region of the 
uh, HPV genome or their respective mRNAs can be specifically targeted to cure uh, cervical cancer. The various molecular techniques used for therapeutic process uh, began with the use of antisense oligonucleotides, ribozymes, uh, DNA gymes, uh, siRNA and ICHRNA as already uh, discussed in the previous slide. And recently uh, genome editing technologies are uh, being uh, utilized uh, like the JDFNs, uh, Talens and uh, uh, CRISPRs uh, to efficiently silence uh, the E6, E7 uh, expression. Uh, JDFNs were first used against HPV E2 gene which prevented the virus from uh, replicating within the host cell. Uh, later the JDFNs were customized to target the HPV E7 gene we successfully disrupted the HPV DNA, uh, inhibited the growth of the HPV 16, 18 uh, positive cervical cancer cells in vitro and were found to undergo uh, apoplosis. And these were further proved to be clinically more efficient as they could also establish their therapeutic effect in genograft uh, mouse uh, model. And here uh, 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 compo Jeller defense were designed to target E6 gene of HPV 16 and this is the schematic representation of JDFN targeting. Uh, uh, a region in exon 1 region of HPV 16 uh, E6. So, this is the JDFN binding site and uh, here uh, rep this represents the uh, uh, number B will uh, represent the nucleotide sequence of the target region uh, of the uh, E6 and uh, C is the illustration of the designed uh, JDFNs targeting uh, E6 uh, regions uh, containing 6 gene fingers on either side 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and uh, 6 in either side and there is a spacer region of around uh, 5 uh, uh, nucleotides. And, uh, the FOC1 nucleases uh, will uh, dimerize and uh, do the uh, genome editing uh, and uh, follow the recombination uh, pathway. So, this is uh, another work on the application of gene finger nucleases targeting the HPV E7 oncogene. In the earlier case, we have uh, studied about the targeting of E6 uh, gene and uh, this is another study where the E7 oncogene uh, was targeted or disrupted and uh, here uh, Ding and his uh, collaborators started the work with an aim uh, to provide a proof of concept uh, to support the use of JDFNs to target HPV E7 uh, to treat HPV related uh, cervical cancer. And in the experiment, they designed and constructed JDFNs that could specifically recognize and cleave the HPV uh, 16 or 18 uh, E7 uh, DNA. And once the design was over, they tested the cleavage efficiency of selected JDFN 16 E7 S2 and JDFN 18 E7 S2 by using single stranded anilin uh, assay. The inhibition of the cell growth uh, that received treatments of JDFNs were estimated using cell viability and uh, colony formation assays and gene disruption of HPV E7 and downstream genes were examined by methods like western blotting. Uh, cell apoptosis assay was uh, used to test the specificity and efficiency of induction of HPV type uh, specific uh, apoptosis. And they finally uh, concluded that uh, both the JDFN constructs uh, they designed and synthesized uh, disrupted HPV E7 oncogenes successfully and led to inhibition of type specific cervical cancer growth and specifically induced apoptosis of corresponding HPV 16 and HPV 18 positive cervical uh, cell lines. Uh, therefore, JDFNs targeting HPV 16 or HPV 18 E7 oncogenes uh, could be used as novel therapeutic agents uh, for the treatment of HPV uh, related cervical uh, cancer. There are many other examples uh, where JDFNs has been uh, used 
uh, as uh, models for cancer therapy or proof of concepts. Uh, we have uh, uh, lectures uh, in the uh, next uh, few uh, classes where we will be discussing the use of uh, genome editing technologies uh, for uh, generating uh, cancer disease models. Uh, there we will discuss uh, some of the uh, remaining uh, examples uh, in both uh, in the case of Jedefin, uh, Talon uh, as well as uh, uh, CRISPR-Cas9. Uh, thank you. Mm -hmm.